Alright guys, today's the day. Gotta get that OS18 I made in that video. And that uh, Traxxas clone right there. So it's actually like a Traxxas 2.5, uh, it's called a match wheel. But it looks just like a Traxxas 2.5. I originally bought it just for the, the Bronco body. Um, actually, you know, bought it on offer up to restore to it. So this is my 3D printed uh, RC mounting system. So I think first page if you want it. So here's the truck it's going into. For one, I actually have, I have a real Bronco. All right. So that's actually why I wanted the Bronco body so much. All right, so this is the engine that's going into it. Um, this is actually like the most high-end side exhaust carb you could get for the era. Uh, it's an OS18 CBR. And in my previous previous video, there had been a lot of like modification work, mod work on the crank. The carburetor has been opened up. Uh, I didn't do that. The previous person had done that. Compression feels good. Still good pinch left. So um, one thing I had issues with is I had issues. Um, I bought this on another offer up ad, and actually it works. It just sometimes it has issues idling, and uh, I didn't really want to put any more in money into it. Um, and I actually wanted a Japanese engine. This is a HPI engine, which is either I think it's either made in China or Taiwan, pretty much the same place. Um, but yeah, I, I typically like to buy, buy either Japanese or Italian engines. So uh, this is a pipe that powder coated, and uh, but that does look pretty cool in there, and with the blue and the blue. So, but right now I actually currently have an SG crankshaft in there. I need to, and this actually had a short shaft, so I need to figure out a way to get the clutch spacing right you know either the clutch I, mean, I do have multiple clutches and different things but uh, getting the spacing right is uh, kind of gonna be tricky all right so I got this thing off and uh, come back all right so here is the HPI uh, Nitro Star 18 and these were both good engines of the day I mean, they, they still sell this engine right here um, but this was the top this was the uh, pinnacle of uh, development. So this actually has an SG crankshaft, and this one has that short step. So I'm going to find or adapt a way uh, to get a crankshaft on there. And I also noticed that my new um, Moto Saber seal or air cleaner uh, won't fit. You look at this difference in the carburetor size. I mean, that's this is another thing you can tell. <laughs> look at the Venturi size in this carburetor. Way bigger. So the holes are about the same, but the outside diameter is not going to fit that. So I'm going to have to figure that out, and um, I mean, I'd like to use the larger flywheel, but we'll see. So, I mean, I have so many different clutch kits from different cars. Um, I mean, actually, I got back into RC cars to get my kid into it, but, you know, modern kids really aren't into the RC stuff. Um, I mean, I grew up with this. You know, when I grew up, we didn't have internet and phones, cell phones, so, um, but working in RC cars, like RC10s and that was my introduction to like electronics and kind of set me down a, a path in technology, you know, IT. So, but, um, but yeah, it was fun. We're talking, this is like in the 80s, the late 80s, early 90s. So, all right. So I got to get that thing off. So the rear um, plates are different, the, uh, the size here and here. This is actually a larger diameter one. The uh, pull start, like the whole space in here is bigger, so I do actually need. I have extra parts. I have to try to find one. Hopefully, if not, then I'll buy one. But, but this actually is a whole pattern of actually like a big block, because I actually had some extra ones for my big blocks. I, I don't typically like roto starts or any sort of pull start. I mean, I prefer a bump box. Uh, but on this truck, you can't get a bump box to it. So my your only option is either pull start or drill start. And I don't want to do pull start. That's blisters. So, um, so what I was saying before is like in the 80s and 90s, since we didn't have cell phones and internet, you know, our, if you were a tech person, you were into like RC hobbies. It was really big in the 80s and 90s. So, like I said, if you were into tech and you were a kid, that's what we did. So, if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, you know, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I saw this stuff. Um, this is some the stuff I designed in Fusion 360. And that's a receiver tray, battery box. Uh, uh, servo cover. Well, I did a couple other things in this thing. Forgot. Oh, front bumpers, front and back bumper for clearance with the roto start. All that stuff's on my Thingiverse page. I use a uh, power steering pump uh, pulley remover. It's the perfect thing for taking off a clutch. 
All right, so that's an SG crankshaft. Just the crankshaft's longer, so I'm hoping I can do adapt somehow with this thing that came with it. But I mean, on this YouTube channel, I've pretty much fixed everything: electronics, 3D printers, computers, cars, CNC machine, whatever. It doesn't make a difference. Appliances, built cabins. Um, I guess the point is, if you have a technical mindset, you know, you can pretty much fix anything. So. Yeah, but it all started with the RC cars. So it started when I was, you know, six or seven years old building RC cars. That's my original. That was the original engine that came out of it. So another one for the collection. That's the HPI. Gonna make some more room up there. Originally, I thought I might go with the flywheel and the clutch that came with it, but it actually has these smaller shoes. See that right there? And um, and this is actually the one. This is more like a stock style for like Traxxas. And I think I'm going to go up and use this one in here because it has more surface area. Uh, it's a much larger uh, shoe. And especially uh, with these big tires, you know, you're going to want more grab. You know, it's going to be harder to control this with these smaller clutch. This, this would be good for like an on-road car probably. Like I think this engine really came off an on-road car. Like an associated, uh, I mentioned in their earlier video, but one of those 10 scale on-road cars. So yeah, you don't need as much clutch because the tires are tiny. So I'm going to go with this one. All right, so it's going to be a combination of three different clutch parts. Even off the, the original bell housing, the HPI, and a combination of both of those. But then also I have to deal with the offset. <clears throat> like there's multiple different stands, which put the engine either forward or backwards to line up with the spur gear. All right, so it looks like i got to use either bell. This one right here, just too tight. Can't go any more forward. Um, I mean, I could always use like the other stand and bring it back. And like I said, there's so many different variations. So with this stand, my bling stand, I was too close. With this one, I'm too far out. I mean, I guess I could like shim it out this way if I want to do. Like shim this thing out this way. All right, so I did a little filing here and there uh, on one of these washers, like the goes on the. Uh, the uh, flywheel here. So I, I, I think I brought it back about two millimeters this way, millimeter and a half, two millimeters back this way. So now I should be able to use my uh, bling stand again. So hopefully I'm about a millimeter or two back this way. All right, now we have good clutch alignment. It's not touching the gearbox. And I have a couple of millimeters here between the spur and pinion. Exhaust back on. So, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, yeah, this uh, Venturi is actually the size of an uh, A scale, but it's a small block, so um, I don't, well, I don't have a, an air filter that's going to fit in this area. So, I think a Team Losi one with that curved pipe probably work. It has to clear the spur gear here. Alright, so this thing actually came with a number three glove plug, which is pretty hot, so keep that in there. Um, I'm not going to fully, I'm just going to let it run here for a couple minutes, maybe like a half tank through it. Uh, with a 14% oil, 20% nitro. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go extreme yet until I get the, you know, the actual mixture settings right. Um, plus, this thing, who knows? This thing probably hasn't been running forever, you know. So, uh, plus I cleaned it up, so I don't want to stress it with some um, fuel with a lot of nitro content. So, get some fuel in there, and it's gonna let it fire up. Then I have a, another air filter ordered. So, want a moto saver. But uh, yeah, hopefully this thing, we'll see. Well, actually, I don't even know if it's going to work or not, but we'll see. Right, so if you've seen my, this uh, Drake on any of my stuff before, that's actually the name of my kid. So it's not Drake racing like the, the racing guy. All right, get my Makita drill to start. Uh, i got to prime the engine, have a little bit of fuel in there. Actually, i got to get this thing going. The engine. Okay, I can see fuel coming out here. Alright, get a glow plug. Get a live glow plug. It's the first fire up. We'll see what happens. Get this thing with gas. I'll hold this back in case it takes off on me.
get the curb idle is off a little bit. Because I'm holding the gas in to keep this running. 